I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I am so glad to see you all. We missed you last week. So I'm just going to dive right in. (laughs) Today we hear the call of Samuel and Jesus telling the parable of the talents. If we think about it, there are basically two types of parables. The ones like the prodigal son that offer a surprise of grace at the end, or ones like today's parable of the talents that follow a more cause and effect model where there are no gifts or parties, but instead a focus on the obligations of those trusted with special gifts. What we do with those gifts is left up to each person to navigate. It's important to keep in mind those two types of parables depend upon one another, I think. Together they present a necessary balance of justice and grace, either of which becomes distorted without the other. So I'm going to ask you to hold on to that as we move forward the image of the balance of justice and grace as I share with you about our recent visit to Cuba. We are back safe and sound. Your seven missionaries, Tyler and Brad, Francine and Heather, Kate, Marissa, and myself. The sweaty and stinky, the well-loved and well-fed seven We were met with song and cheers and kisses of welcome. They kiss you three times. The people of Zaria are indeed that wonderful. They are loving and generous. We were drenched in radical hospitality. We did bring humanitarian aid, the medications and supplies, the food and financial gifts that you all generously provided. They were delivered in their entirety. Tyler. Tyler led the inspection and repair of the living waters systems, and together we celebrated 10 years of the system, and Marissa led education programs about safe water for adults and for children, and this time trained the trainers so that they can be self-reliant and train others as the years pass. Together with the people of Zaria and the surrounding villages of Cuatros Quinos and Los Arabos, the official mission was accomplished, thanks be to God. But I think it's safe for me to answer on everyone's behalf. What did we think of our trip? That's the question we keep receiving. We all need a little bit of time to process. (laughs) But this morning, With you, I'm gonna try and make sense out of the things that are rising to the surface for me. Cuba is a complex country. We spent our first day and a half in Havana, led by a young local, an interpreter named Miguel, who is a father and a husband. He is also a teacher. He is bright and curious and kind. And we had meals together. And at meals, we had time for conversations conversations about living in Cuba and about how he experiences the world around him. Cubans do have access to American television and music. They watch Friends. And he's a fan of Michael Bolton. (laughs) He acquired a local newspaper for us and the story on the front page above the fold was about Lenin. out-of-date television, music, and news. This is the world that they are allowed to experience. They are shielded and directed. We shared with him about our home, our city and country. We shared about justice and power and grace. We talked about how we attend to those things as a church community, as well as the very near and real challenges near our church and in and near our homes and county. During the week, I realized that the relationship that we have with our sister parish is more than an annual visit and the provision of humanitarian aid. It is one of true covenant 
It is a binding relationship. You know, we pray for them every Sunday. They pray for you. They love you. You are their Christian family. They know about this church. They know about what's happening here. We had a meeting with their vestry, a solid three-hour meeting. <laughs> Each parish shared updates about the lives and goings-on in their parishes, both of which I'm happy to report are growing. And this was already clear to us. When we had education time with the children in Zaria, there were at least 72 children at least 15 of which were teenagers, and this is in a village of 500 people. The children gather every week for Saturday school. They come wearing their best clothes, and they spend the afternoon singing, playing, praying, and learning about God together. The vestry is led by Father Juan Carlos. That name may ring familiar with you, because we do pray for him by name every Sunday. He tends three churches, one in Zaria and each in the surrounding villages. The vestry is also led by their senior warden, Aurora. Aurora is to be described to you as no less than extraordinary. She is a woman of God and she is their leader. She is ever present. Padre Juan Carlos spoke of a new space that they hope to use to process sesame seeds into oil. This will provide cooking oil for the villages, but it is their real hope that they can eventually process enough oil so that they can sell it. Aurora shared that they would like to become self-sustaining, but they cannot do this alone. They shared their concerns, they shared their fears, they are scared, they are scared that we will not continue our relationship with them. You know, as clergy leaders turn over and priorities change in churches, they're scared. You see, because it's not just about food and medications and money and water. There is a bridge between us, and it is built and sustained with Christian hope and trust and faith and love. And as far as we can see, and I say this in all humility, St. John's, you are the hope that they do not get from anywhere else. I'm going to say that again. You are the hope that they cannot get from anywhere else. In the parable of the talents, we hear, for all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. With this, there is obligation and responsibility. We have been trusted with special gifts, not just financial, not just our intellect, but our hearts and our our bodies, our souls, special gifts. And what we do with these gifts is left up to each person and community to navigate our mission with San Pedro Apostle in Zoria is not just about being stewards of financial gifts and the feel-good efforts of providing the things that they need, and trust me, it does feel good. It is about living into God's call of relationship and responsibility of living in Christian covenant. It is about showing up on the other end of that bridge that lies between us. It is about understanding that for us, It is both our privilege and honor that God uses St. John's not just to help, but so that hope is real and lasting in Zaria. This can feel like an intimidating responsibility, but with faith we remember the hope of the people of Zaria is not based on their circumstances. Rather, it is a way of seeing and knowing that keeps their hearts and minds alert and alive, alert and alive to what God is doing in the world. It has nothing to do with how well they are doing or how easy and up-to-date their understanding is of the world around them. 
their hope is real and a true gift of grace from God. Yes, we did bring them all the things, the food, the money, the medicine, the bras, but they gave us back so much more. Because their hope is our hope. Their love is our love. Together we are one body and one spirit. Together we are one hope in God's call to us. One grace shared. This is real. So in your daily life, when you feel like God isn't there, take note from our Zaria family. God finds a way to reach us, whether it be in the paradoxical midst of a faraway land or in our capital city, in a small village or in a bustling cafe, love and hope overflows. Let that spirit of God rest in you because she will. Be the instrument of balance of God's grace and holy justice. Do this for one another Hold it close, hold it gently. During the past weeks to be in the midst of this, it was both humbling and overwhelming. And it is with gratitude to you, to our siblings in Cuba, and to the seven that I say thank you. And amen. <laughs>